بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه ده ما بعد at the end of Surah At-Tawbah Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the story of three of the companions Allah Azza wa Jal says لقد تاب الله على النبي والمهاجرين والأنصار الذين اتبعوه في ساعة العسرة Allah already forgave the Prophet, the Muhajireen, and the Ansar. Then the next ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا And Allah accepted the repentance of the three who were left behind. Three of the companions of the Prophet wasallam did not follow him to Tabuk. Tabuk was very far. And it was in summertime, very hot, against very strong enemy. So not everybody was able to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Those who couldn't, they are excused. But the ones who were able to and didn't do so, they are the ones who are blameworthy. And of those people, three of the companions. The rest, the hypocrites, that's not an issue. Over 70 of them, they were left in Medina. Because they are hypocrites. They pretend to be Muslims. They wouldn't go with the Prophet ﷺ. But those three were able to go. The ones who were unable to go, they are forgiven. Some of them, Allah also mentioned them in the same surah earlier. They would come to the Prophet ﷺ asking him, we need to go with you. He asks them, do you have a camel? Do you have a mount? Do you have anything to ride? They say no. He says, I cannot take you. It's not a short journey. It's 40 days. You cannot just walk. So you cannot join us. What happened to them? Allah Azza wa mentioned, They would turn with their eyes flooding with tears. Their eyes flooding with tears. Why? Is it because they lost a job, an opportunity? They lost a game? Or they lost a house that they were supposed to take? No. They lost the chance to accompany the Prophet ﷺ to go with him. That's why they turn while their eyes are flooding with tears. So that's not the issue. The issue is those three who were able to go, but they didn't go. One of them, Ka'ab ibn Malik, عنه, he says, at that time, I was ready. As ready as it gets. It was the only time, I didn't only had one camel, I had two, actually. So I had no excuse. The only problem, every time, because the announcement was made early, Whoever wants to join, he has to be ready. We're going in five days, in a week, in one day. We're going today. He says, my problem, every time I procrastinate, I keep delaying. I say, it doesn't take long. Once they are ready, I will be ready. Until I heard the news that tomorrow is the day. They are going tomorrow. And still, even then, I said, tomorrow I'll get myself ready. Tomorrow came, they left, and I didn't go. Even after that, I said, I can catch up with them. The army moves slow. I am one man, I could catch up with them. That even didn't happen until they already reached Tabuk. So this is something happened to one of the companions of the Prophet wasallam. Procrastination. It could happen to any one of us. All what it takes is just to do the act. That's it. Just because you procrastinate, it doesn't mean you are a bad person. But it is a bad behavior. And it could happen to good people and to bad people. If it happened to one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, it could happen to any one of us. But look how much it cost him. Just because he procrastinated. 40 days, no one was allowed to speak with him. 40 days. 
and then another 10 days. 50 days until Allah Azza wa Jal accepted their repentance. The story is very long. It is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Very long story. Ka'b radiallahu anh mentioning what happened to him. Just because he procrastinated. So try from now to think of one thing. One thing you have been procrastinating. Taking your wife for a nice dinner, giving her a flower, doing, making a phone call. Seriously, try to do it, one thing. Now, and then after that you realize that other things will follow, inshallah. They joke about that, but it is true. There is an association, it's called PCA. PCA. Procrastinators Community of America. <laughs> it was established in 1958. And still they don't have a director. <laughs> they have acting director. Really, that's true. Because again, if they are procrastinators, that's what you expect from them. So when it costs money, it costs money. But that's OK. But when it costs hasanat, that is the danger. And Muslims, typically, they delay prayer. It's already Adhan. Yes, but how long until the next prayer? No. When was the Adhan? That's what you should ask. They procrastinate fasting, make up the days until Ramadan comes. People ask, is it okay to fast the last day before Ramadan? Why would you wait until the last day? You had the entire year. That happens. In general, Muslims and non-Muslims, they procrastinate in other things, like losing weight, or practicing, going to uh, the gym, working out. They subscribe to a club. They go one time, second time, and then after that, they never go. So these are the things that people procrastinate. So think of one thing. One thing you have been procrastinating, try from today that you will do it. This would be good. Don't listen to the shaitan. The shaitan would tell you it's too much. You cannot do everything. Even if you cannot do everything, try to do one thing only. Start with one thing, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Announcements? Question about one of the companions. Procrastinate until tomorrow. <laughs> hmm? 20 questions, oh. not 10. So we have 10, now 20. Okay. Now, tonight's question is about one of the companions. She is a female. One of the wives of those three people who asked the Prophet ﷺ, because after 40 days, the Prophet ﷺ told the wives even not to speak with them, even the wives. So she came to him and told him, asking him an excuse for her husband. Who was that woman? That's the question for tonight.